Hello, Taurus, and welcome to your August reading with me, Elizabeth. I hope you're all doing well out there. This is going to be a general message for Taurus Sun, Moon, and Rising. As always, never give up your power to a reading or to a reader. Please use your own highest intuition and guidance. Take what resonates and leave the rest. All of the decks are listed in the description box below, along with the best way to contact me if you would like to inquire about a personal session. So thank you for your patience, Taurus. I know you didn't get a July reading. Here we are in August. Thank you. Welcome back if you're returning. And if you're new here, welcome as well. I love and appreciate all of you so much. So let's get right into your reading, Taurus. Never give up your power to a reading or to a reader. Let's invite in the divine with love and light. And let's invite in the archangels at the four corners of the world and the six elements of earth, wind, fire, water, spirit, and ether to join us for this reading for the Taurian Collective. We have a big month uh, in the month of August because it's going to be a month of a blue moon. So we have a full moon in Aquarius on the first of the month. And the last day of the month, um, or the 30th of the month, we have a second full moon in Pisces. So that's the blue moon right? And it's Leo season. It's Lionsgate portal. So we have a kind of Egyptian Atlantis theme here this month. And um, yeah, so I'm not going to take the jumpers because I wasn't really focused. But yeah, so my beautiful Taurus, this is a month that's highly auspicious, whether you're in the Northern Hemisphere or the Southern Hemisphere. So let's look at the astrology for you. Let's see what the guides have for Taurus. You still have Uranus and Jupiter in your sign. Oh, okay. So we got two jumpers. Let's take them. All right. So the first one that jumped is Mercury retrograde with reinvention. So yes, Mercury is going retrograde in Virgo this month. So this is going to be a time, you know, where you can really reflect, review, um, reassess things. I feel this is beautiful for you with Mercury coming in because um, it's showing me that you have like this energy of really like um, wanting to look within and see what you can do to improve things in your life because with that you're getting Capricorn. So it's a lot of earth energy because um, Mercury is in Virgo, right? And Capricorn is an earth sign, number 51 and number 22, angel number 22, master number 22. So the earth energy coming in for you along with the energy of the mind. So this is where I feel like you have goals here. That's Capricorn, high standards. That's Capricorn, willing to put in the work, willing to make the effort, utilizing the energies that are around you to improve your life, to make moves, um, to uh, make progress, but that's big progress because Capricorn's the 10th house. So that's around career, reputation, you're standing in the public. So for some of you, you're even reinventing yourself with something that you do publicly and in your professional life or even within your social life. Um, very, very interesting. So it's the energy of reinvention around yourself. And this is utilizing your strength because Capricorn is the mountain goat. So ability to, to climb the highest peaks, to get to the top, 10th house, the very top of the wheel. Beautiful. I feel you're very driven right now, actually, because at the bottom of the deck is Mars with force. Amazing. And Mars is also in Virgo. So this is where um, when Mars was in Leo, when Mercury was in Leo, it's like we had the passion, the drive, maybe the inspiration. We could feel that fire in our belly. And now with Mars and Mercury in Virgo, this is where we can take the practical steps. This is where we can do the planning. This is where we can like actually um, put the passion into uh, an, into inspired action. It's taking the action. So you're driven right now with Capricorn and then Mars at the bottom, you are very driven. Some of you may have strong Capricorn placements or could be dealing with the Capricorn. So let's look at the tarot for you. I'm loving this energy for you, uh, Taurus. I really, really am 100%. So let's see where we go with this. Thank you to the guides. Thank you, angels. All right, thank you for showing me Taurus. Highest and best messages for my beautiful Taurians. We also have Pluto that retrograded back into the last degrees of Capricorn. 
So that's also part of it. It's like looking back at the past 15 years, all of the hard work that you've put in, uh, all of the progress that you've made over the last 15 years, who you became over the last 15 years, and how some of that is going to take you into the future once Pluto moves back into Aquarius in 2024, and also how some of it no longer applies to you, okay? And what you're releasing around your identity, your reputation, um, your, your public life, these are the parts of you that are public. So uh, Taurus is reinventing themselves right now in a very down-to-earth, practical, solid way, like a Taurian. So I love that. All right. So we've got the Two of Wands. Yes, you've got the whole world in your hands right here. And this is where you're taking the time to sort of reflect, reassess, um, it, but it's fire energy. So again, it's more of that Mars passion, right? Aries energy. So this is Aries, Aries. Ten of chalices. Amazing, Taurus. I love this. You are in this for the long haul. And I love that it's the Ten of Cups because all of this hard work, all of this planning, this strategy, I feel this is a lot of strategy. It's connected to your heart. It's because you want your heart to be happy and you want that happily ever after. The love, the contentment, um, you know, it's the higher timelines that you're looking at. So there may be some choices even this month. Let's see where else we go with this. Ace of Pentacles, beautiful, 100%. So there's, um, there's you sort of with the whole world in your hands. Your heart is on, it's heart-centered. And there's the Ace of Pentacles that's coming in for you during this Lionsgate portal, an open door, something solid. The Aces, Ace of Pentacles is the most solid Ace in the deck here, you know? And I love how he's sort of, um, he's, he's almost kissing that Eye of Horus there or the Eye of Ra. I forget which one that is because it's the divine and it's, it's your, your vision. It's your intuition, your higher knowing and your higher perspective on things. And the judgment, amazing. So ooh, uh, Leo just got the judgment as well. So this is a finality for you. This is like, it's a calling to the higher path, your, who you are, who you're becoming, who you're meant to be. And the Empress, there's your card. So when your own card comes out in your reading, you know it's going to be a good month. Ace of Pentacles, judgment, the Empress. I feel that there's an opportunity with that Two of Wands there could be around a relationship for you even, you know, something very, very long term. You may be, you may be like meeting someone uh, with this reinvention energy. If you're single, there may be somebody new coming in and like you're so spiritually aligned with this person. Uh, the Empress, she's the wealthiest woman in the deck. So this is also around your abundance, your long term stability. I, you're in a growth cycle here. With the Ace of Pentacles, Judgment, and the Empress, I feel you may have a big opportunity this month. Um, and it may be something that, you know, you're looking at it. Um, you're going to be like really actively like sort of seeing, all right, is this aligned? If I do this, then how does this go? Like you're taking a moment to sort of figure it out, which I love. You're making sure that it's connected to your highest path, your highest destiny. Um, but ultimately, I really feel like it is. And this, this is spirit saying, yes, this is part of the, this is part of um, your your soul plan here. She's the creatrix. She's pregnant with opportunity, with ideas with how to grow her life. She values herself. It's your ruling planet of Venus. Now, Venus is retrograde in Leo, you know, until September. And it's a longer transit. So that is a time to reflect upon your values. What do you really value? And here with Taurus, it's like you are placing so much value on love, on your heart, on your happiness. You really are. And I love that. And But it's still connected to your abundance, to things that are beautiful. That's the Empress and Venus. You are Venusian, so you love the beautiful things. Um, this is highly fortuitous for you. Let's look at the bottom of the deck. There's the Virgo energy. So literally Mars and Mercury in Virgo. So you are taking the small steps, the everyday steps, the planning one step at a time. I said this to Leo. One thing that I'm cautioning 
because these energies are coming out is not to get too caught up on the perfection of things. That everything has to be absolutely perfect. And this can, Virgo energy can be self-critical. So it's like, you know, kind of just having that awareness um, because it's a 10 of cups, which can represent, again, it's like that perfect happily ever after. This opportunity, this energy that you're feeling right now, it is so grounded in reality. It's not just a dream. It's not just a flight of fancy. So take the practical steps around it, even if it doesn't look perfect, like every moment of every day. And under that was another one of your cards, Knight of Pentacles, Virgo with the Hierophant Taurus. So this is absolutely committing to the spiritual path of your life that whatever this is, all of this physicality here, um, it's so rooted in things that are solid and beautiful and divine, 100%. So commit to it. This is the commitment to it. Um, with Osiris there, you know, and here's Isis here. Here's like the, um, the divine couple. I'm even seeing like some of you, you either have a very solid partnership here, uh, a very solid relationship, and they're acknowledging that, okay? Or if you are single, I'm really seeing this as a time to take action around getting yourself out there, reinventing yourself, putting yourself out there, putting your best foot forward, um, because your energy is that of the empress, of the queen, of all queens. So looking very attractive. If any of you are trying to grow your family, or become, you know, pregnant with child, or if you're masculine and your partner wants to, I see this is a fertile month. It's a fertile period. You're on fertile ground. Okay. You are on fertile ground. There's a seed here. So plant it, nurture it, tend to it. It's going to bloom. I feel like even quickly, I feel that anything that you plant right now and, and utilize this energy of the force and take the action in a very practical and real way, it's going to grow fast. Okay. That's what I'm feeling. So let's get you some more Oracle and then we're going to clarify the tarot and then we're going to talk to Isis and see what she has for you. So thank you to the guides. Ooh. Okay. So they just came jumping right out and there's three of them. So we're getting the third eye. My psychic senses remember the way, and you can work with amethyst this month. That would be a helpful crystal for you, um, whether it's a point, a sphere. I love the, um, the, the clusters because the clusters always talk to soul family, um, soul groups coming together. Uh, this is highly, again, it's very spiritual for you, and that's with the judgment. And your vision, your intuition, super on point, your crown chakra and your third eye being very, very activated at this time. We're also getting the card of Atlantis. Atlantis has risen. The awakening begins. This is your awakening. There's, there's like a big aha moment here. The divine is calling. Um, and so answer that call. <clears throat> okay. So this is like you also rising. You're rising, number one of the self. Number eight there with the third eye, the month of August, eight. Number one, this is the self. I feel you're rising, okay? Your life is elevating. Your life is rising. Beautiful. And then with that, love this, two plus six equals eight. Eight, eight, lion's gate right here, karma. Life is a mystical mirror. Beautiful. So I feel this is also, this is your good karma, this is your good karma. So life being that mirror, this is all of the hard work that you've already put in because the Capricorn energy is there. All of the hard work that you've already put in, all of your prior lifetimes, this is your good karma returning because the Empress, your card, this is fortune that's coming in for you in a, in a very real way, in a very practical and, and beautiful way for you. So um, I love that so much for you. And I feel it's also a release of some of the heavier energies of the past. But I don't know. I feel like you're just coming into this month very strong with solid choices and your solar plexus with the fire energy there and the Aries energy of Mars. Like your solar plexus is activated. I feel like you've already had that activation. So some water energy coming in for you. The mermaid and the merman, 
definitely could be speaking to a relationship here. Um, mythical memory, mystical message. So I'm seeing a partnership for Taurus. And if you don't know who this person is, what they're saying is then make this a focus. If you are, if you are, uh, seeking a relationship and that's something that you want to bring into your life, they are acknowledging that for you. And if this person's already in your life, this is a very sacred connection. Anytime the seahorses come in, it's another sign of good fortune. That's why um, in, in old times, the sailors, maybe even now, they would carry sort of like a seahorse amulet with them um, because it brought them good luck while they were at sea. And it symbolizes union. Uh, some of you may have strong water placements. You love swimming. You love the water. Look, two dolphins, two seahorse. There's a turtle. So um, that's more of the Taurian energy, you know, but it's amphibious. Uh, so this is mystical, magical. And you can even see how it goes so well with that Atlantis. So some of you are mermaids. I think I did a reading for you last year and I entitled it The Little Mermaid. And it was even from a different deck. So there's some connection with Taurus and the mermaids. Um, very, very magical. That's also the energy of the siren, you know? And if we utilize that in a positive way, it's like your song, the, the vibration that you're giving out right now, it is a magnet. It's, it's calling things in. It's inviting in energies. So to be aware of that, right? Because that's the good karma you've already created. So keep that momentum going is what they're telling me. So let's clarify the tarot for you. Mystical, mythical, mystical. The M words, right? Life is a mystical mirror. Mythical memory, mystical message. Very interesting. So there's a lot of magic here. I'm also seeing this as your castle, you know, because the Empress obviously would live um, in a castle of some kind, and I'm seeing that as a castle. So this is your, your castle in the sky, a dream that you've had, the dreams that you've been having maybe all of your life, and it's bringing that into reality with that Ace of Pentacles here and the Ten of Cups. Your dreams can become a reality for real. And those are your visions with your third eye. Your psychic senses remember the way. So this has already been written. It's, it's, it's just aligning with it. And I know that's so much easier said than done. But you can do this with that Capricorn energy. You're driven here. Mars and Capricorn. You are driven. I think Aries and Capricorn are two of the most driven signs in the Zodiac. So there you have it. You may have strong Aries placements, Virgo placements, Capricorn placements, definitely the Taurus energy. So let's see what else we have for you. Six of Pentacles, beautiful. I love this. This is Virgo. So it's like, yep, just get up every day, do the things, um, have balance. You know, this is the work that you put in. You're going to receive it back. This is the divine law of compensation right? The divine law of compensation, the divine sees all. So whatever you're putting out energetically, physically, emotionally, spiritually, it's going to come back to you. It's coming back around. This is your light work. I love that. So it's part of your mission of your service work. Virgo is very service oriented and the knave of swords. Beautiful. So these are the messages that we were seeing here. Mythical memory, mystical messages. There may be someone, it's like it's just people in your everyday life. The Six of Pentacles is like your routine, um, your pets, your health, your everyday life. Um, that, that's where the messages are going to be. That's where the communication is coming in. So while you're out at the grocery store or you go to the gym or um, you're on your walk or you go out um, to a gathering or your online communications, networks of people inside of your, your day to day, this is a month with a lot of communication for you. And the Queen of Wands, look at that. So this is uh, this is Aries Leo energy here. And the Queen of Wands, she shines her light upon the world. She's have confidence in yourself. This is the light bringer. You know, she's inspired. She's creative. She's passionate. She's warm hearted. She's generous. Um, she has a flair for the dramatic. So what they're telling me is people are going to be noticing you. Okay, 
People are going to be noticing you. Do you see him? He's looking right at her. These are other people. People are going to be noticing you, your energy. She always, um, she's always shown with a sunflower. Here it's the lotus flowers, but she's always shown with a sunflower and the sunflowers always turn to face the light. So face the light, get out there. Uh, people are gonna notice you and there's opportunity that comes in from that. So I feel people are gonna be watching you and I don't mean that like in a paranoid way, but inside of your business, your vocation, people are watching you. They wanna know what you're doing. You are magnetic with that queen of wands and the empress, like you're highly attractive this month, okay? That's a huge message. Look at that, 10 of pentacles, yes. Get out there, do the things. People are gonna notice you. Be fabulous, be confident, because it's these are things, this Ace of Pentacles is leading to long-term things. It's the seed that you plant that leads to everything that you wanted in your kingdom, okay? And long-term relationships, commitments. There may be someone that you meet this month for singles, right? In your day-to-day -day routine, activities, and maybe they're even younger. For some of you, they may be younger. They are very curious about you. And it is something that's going to lead to a long-term relationship, even in work, uh, clients, partnerships, friendships, friendships even. It's long-term stuff, really. Last card, the moon. Love that. Life is a mystery. Life is a mystical mirror. Mythical memory, mystical messages, the moon, your intuition, your hopes, your dreams, your fears, your subconscious. It's all of it. It's beautiful. We have two full moons this month and the second one is the blue moon. This is your month, Taurus. I'm not even kidding. I feel this so strongly. This is your month. Do the things, take the action, use your force, reinvent yourself, utilize these energies because you're going to rise to the top and it's going to happen fast. Six of Pentacles, 10 of Pentacles, Ace of Pentacles around your health and well-being, your body, the confidence in yourself, how you feel about yourself. It's all there. And this may be like, whoa, I almost feel like intimidated by this. Or th this can be a little scary, but no, you're going to be fine. So, um, yeah, wow, I love that the moon is coming in for you because we're in Leo season. So the sun's already there and you're getting the queen of wands. She is the sun. So the fact that it's the sun and the moon is beautiful for you, you know, and the two of swords. So I knew I, I wanted to see what was after that moon. Do not doubt yourself here. This is moon in Libra where it's like, ah, oh, do I, don't I, can I, can't I, am I, am I not? This can be a blockage, but it's talking about your intuition here. So if you are feeling like, you know, just a day where you're doubting something, that's okay. That may be a day to meditate a little bit. That may be a day to just close your eyes, put on the music, close your eyes and let yourself just vision and journey and chill. Okay. So if you get into that moon and Libra here where you have a moment like that or a day like that, it's totally okay. You know, these are, um, this is energy and it ebbs and flows. So that would be the time, grab your amethyst or your crystal or do some, do some moon gazing this month. Um, nature walks, whatever that is, whatever that looks like for you. Okay. So love that for you. Let's finish up with some messages from Isis and see what she has for us. Look, 10 of cups, 10 of pentacles is 20. The judgment is 20. 2020. You've got 2020 vision right now. Taurus, you've got 2020 vision. Seeing clearly. Okay? Nothing here is going to be in hindsight for you. Like, oh, I wish I did that. Or, oh, I wish I thought of that. Or, oh, I wish that. Nope. You've got 2020 vision. Perfect vision. You got it going on, Taurus. All right, so let's, um, let's, and also you have the North Node that was in your sign for 18 months. Now it's in Aries. So everything that you learned over the last 18 months, all the ways in which you grew in the last 18 months, apply it now. All right, let's see what Isis has for you, Taurus. 
All right, here's two sisters with Hawthorne. I love when Hawthorne comes in. She's the bull. She Well, she's the female cow, not the bull. Uh, Hawthorne is a nod to the female cow. So that's, you know, Taurian energy right there. Divine sisterhood. Yes. Letting the divine feminine nourish you now into new relationships, collaborations, community, and friendships is very wise. There are many souls with whom you have spiritual contracts decided upon before you were born who wish to help you and whom you can help too as you grow together in peace and light and wisdom. Amazing. Divine sisterhood, divine brotherhood, soul connections, soul contracts, soul groups. Um, that's that cluster that I was seeing there with the soul family, the soul groups. Beautiful. You're getting another one that Leo got, the serpent of fire. Beautiful. I love that. Do not assess your current ability based on past standards as they no longer apply to you. That's the reinvention. You are stronger and more powerful now than you have ever been before. You need to learn afresh what you are capable of, and Isis helps you now. 100%. That's the reinvention. Do not assess your current ability based on past standards. Who you were yesterday, who you were last year, what you were able to accomplish, what your luck was, what all of that. You know, maybe you felt like, oh, do I have bad karma or what the hell is happening? Nope. This is, uh, you're stronger and more powerful now. So learn afresh. That's your reinvention. Beautiful. And it's the Leo season with the fire energy. And the serpent there is helping you to shed that old skin, release the fear, release the doubts, anything like that. Give you that confidence, that strength, that wisdom. I feel like you need one more. There's the moon behind her. Do you see that? So there, I knew it. I knew we needed the, another one because of this full moon energy and the, and the blue moon. Yes, look at this, Taurus. Some of you have strong cancer placements. Um, there is a deep feminine wisdom that recognizes the importance of cycles of rest and replenishment and essential to balance our actions of power and demonstration. You are asked to allow this replenishment for yourself right now, trusting that you are in a cycle of creation, the Empress, that is about to shift into a new phase. Release and enjoy the process without having to control or force it. So that's even the Six of Pentacles. It's around the balance because Virgo energy is about self-care. Virgo, the Vestal Virgin, she's, you know, she'll purify her body, her mind, her soul. Um, it's the opposite sign of Pisces, right? So it, it's like taking good care of yourself. If you, that may be the two of wands. You're sort of like, you know, all right, I'm going to take the action. And now I'm just going to chill and rest and be inspired and laugh and have fun and sleep and meditate and, and be on the couch and, you know, whatever. Like it's, it's that balance. Um, so this is cycles. The Lunar Queen also talks about that intuition, right? And then also with the mermaid energy, also very Cancerian, you know, with the um, the nurturing of love and connection and femininity. So embrace your femininity right now, whether you're masculine or feminine, okay? Embrace your sensuality with that water. The Empress, again, she's so beautiful. The Queen of Wands, she's like the hottest queen in the deck, you know, she's super sexy. And, and the, the Empress is just beautiful. She has a timeless beauty. No matter what her age is or her status, she's just a timeless beauty. So this is so amazing. The Lunar Queen with this, with this energy of the two full moons of this month is very, very lucky for you. But you also have to take the action with that Ace of Pentacles there. So this is about knowing when to take the action. You're in a growth cycle with the Empress there, and you've got this Lunar Queen there guiding you, helping you to overcome fear or self-doubt or any of that. So my beautiful Taurus, bottom of the deck, I do have to show you this. Okay, is Isis sort of inside of this wheel? And it says magic and ritual. Um, effect in the external world can be created through your inner practice. Heart-centered ritual can support your inner path in the physical world. You are encouraged to enhance your power with regular practice as you grow in grace, love, ability, and wisdom, applying your inner beauty to transform your outer world. So this is even like the self-care rituals, you know, go to the spa or make your home into a little spa. 
Um, like have a ritual around cooking or making your, your beautiful food. If you're, if you're gardening, um, whatever that is, even your art, your, your creativity, all of that, um, it's enhancing your natural beauty. That's another thing. I feel like, uh, people are really going to be noticing you. I said that they're really going to be noticing you and whatever your rituals are, your sacred rituals. We did see the hierophant there. So that's, you know, it is spiritual. It's around your own rituals. Maybe it's burning your incense, lighting candles, uh, how going to the ocean with that mermaid energy, collecting some seashells, making a little altar even. Okay. So I think this may even be a month for you to make a new altar, um, for whatever it is, seashells, crystals, um, natural elements, the empress, or even beautiful things, right? This could be a month where you even purchase something. You, If your money has been looking good, or if there's one thing that you've really wanted and like the money is, is there for it, I feel you have more abundance coming in. You may want to purchase something nice for yourself. That's the empress. She's going to treat herself. So Taurus, those were your messages. I love you so much. I hope this was helpful. Please do like, share, subscribe. Um, you can follow me on Instagram, Elizabeth Light Tarot. I do a lot of readings over there as well. I'm sending you lots of love and light. Have a wonderful, wonderful month ahead, and I will talk to you all soon. Namaste.